turns out we have some ways to solve the time travel paradoxes. Time travel sounds enticing, but brings with us a lot of problems. Take, for example, the famous grandfather paradox. Imagine that you travel back in time and prevent your grandparents from meeting. This alters the course of history. But how? If you erase their encounter, you cease to exist. So you couldn't even travel back in time to alter the past in the first place. There's also the bootstrap paradox. Let's say we travel back in time and give Beethoven his own compositions before he ever penned them. He gets famous for the very music you provided. But where did it originate? Did you start it? Or was it Beethoven who started it? There are many theories about time travel. One of them involves alternate timelines and parallel universes. Like in Back to the Future, for example. If parallel worlds exist, we could hypothetically travel in one where the events unfolded differently, while our original timeline stays the same. This is a beautiful and paradox-free approach, but this is pure sci-fi, as we have no concrete evidence of parallel universes. So what scientists are trying to do instead is to figure out whether time travel is impossible in this one universal timeline. We've been exploring this equation for over a decade and created a fascinating concept called a closed time-like curve, or CTC. Imagine taking a path that forms a loop, bringing it back to where it started, but in time. We know that space-time is like a wobbly piece of cloth which can curve and bend when we place heavy objects on it. In some situations, like near-massive objects such as stars or black holes, space-time can be curved. Now, imagine an object that's so heavy, with gravity curving the space-time so strongly that it literally loops on itself. If this idea turns out to be real, it could suggest the possibility of traveling back in time in our world line. This possibility is fascinating, but it also creates tons of problems, and scientists may have found the ways to solve them. One of the solutions is that doing paradoxical things can be simply impossible. In this scenario, we assume that the universe has some mechanisms of self-consistency. It means that while you can still travel in time, you're restricted in the actions you can take. For example, you may not be able to go back and alter your family's history, but there's nothing inherently illogical about traveling back in time to simply interact with your ancestors. In this scenario, the universe only forbids you to do logically impossible things. Scientists decided to conduct an experiment to check if it works, and the results were pretty terrifying. The experiment conducted involved the creation of a theoretical time machine. This is also called an in-principle time machine. This wasn't a physical device, but rather a quantum simulation. In the simulation, they attempted to send a photon back in time by a fraction of a second and make it interact with its past self. The goal was to find out what the photon will do. Will it destroy its previous self, avoid the interaction, or something else? What happened is that as the photon approached its past self and was getting closer to the point of creating a paradox, the experiment tended to fail more frequently. In other words, it seems like the laws of physics or the fabric of the universe might have some weird built-in mechanisms that prevent time travel paradoxes. In that case, the question is, how does the universe understand what is logically impossible? And how does it prevent us from doing these things? Which is quite scary to think about. There's another theory that the universe allows paradoxical things to happen but also self-corrects them. Imagine a time traveler going back to stop some health condition from spreading. According to this theory, even if the traveler succeeds, this health condition would find another way to spread, avoiding the paradox. Or maybe we all exist in time loops. These loops allow objects to interact with their past selves while still maintaining a consistent timeline because there's no beginning point. For example, trying to prevent a historical event could result in accidentally catalyzing the event we were trying to prevent. This idea challenges our understanding of classical physics and free will. But all these ideas are purely theoretical, and to test them, 
we first need to find the mechanism to actually travel back in time. Talking about practical time travel, we mentioned that space-time curves around very heavy objects. Does it mean that black holes can be portals to the past and the future? Maybe! Black holes are formed when a massive star collapses inward. Their gravitational pull is so intense that even light can't escape. This means they're perfect for bending not just space, but even time itself. You might remember this from Interstellar. Near a black hole, time slows down. This effect is so pronounced that a year near a black hole could translate to decades on Earth. In that case, traveling back to the past using a black hole is theoretically possible. If their gravity twists time so much that it wraps back on itself, creating a closed time-like curve, and you could enter this loop, you'd find yourself on a journey from the future to the past. But there are some problems with this. First, you can only travel into the black hole's past. Second, to enter the loop, you'd likely have to cross the event horizon, the point of no return around a black hole. To escape one, you'd have to travel faster than light, which is currently impossible. So, while black holes might hold the keys to time travel, the journey inside one might be your last. But not everyone agrees that closed time-like curves exist at all. Recent research has shed new light on this topic. The results showed that time can only move forward. The research offered a fresh perspective on how light behaves when it encounters different materials. When light moves through empty space, it travels at a constant speed of 186,000 miles per second. But when it encounters substances like water or glass, its speed can change, causing it to bend or refract. While scientists have equations to describe this behavior, they struggled with the problem of the change of the speed of light at the boundary in different mediums. Well, researchers proposed a solution to this puzzle by reconsidering how light moves through time and space. They figured out that it always remains constant as it travels through different mediums. No matter what the light encounters, it always moves forward in time. This means that light and other waves like it follow the same one-way path through time that we do. Another thing is that light also always saves its momentum, and it always stays the same, pointing forward in time. And finally, even with general relativity and with gravity bending light very strongly, it still keeps pointing forward. It can slow down to the point of feeling like time stopped, but never move backwards. This challenges our previous notions about the relationship between light and time. It implies that time has a definite direction for all waves, making it impossible to reverse. However, their equations have only been tested in one dimension, and experiments are needed to confirm if this theory holds true in reality. Stephen Hawking also disagreed with the idea of traveling back in time. He proposed a theory called the Chronology Protection Conjecture. This idea says that the laws of physics stop time travel on large scales, even when theories like general relativity say it's possible, and that closed time-like curves simply can't exist. Hawking said that traveling back in time would mean creating new matter, which goes against the laws of physics. Although we're far from building actual time machines, if we keep diving into mathematics, we might find the truth one day. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.